Hi, I'm Mike Shonley, CTO of Cantex Research, and today in this ongoing series, we are going to be talking about, oh my, what are all those buttons for? Wow, that's a lot of buttons. So let's start with the top. We've got four buttons here and six lights and two buttons here. This is for selecting all the different sounds. So we can do, or we can do, extra low ones so that's what these six banks these go bank up and down and then these select the program within the bank then we've got a slider here which can be used to control the sound in different ways depending on the patch we've got these two buttons which currently don't do anything yet so that's it for the selection ones oh yes and then there's also the accelerometer on off Pressing that on or off turns it so as you tilt it up and down, you can either generate signals that can affect the sound or you can turn it off if you don't want to. Then we've got these extra pads here with these little indicator LEDs. These can do different things depending on how they're configured. They could do pitch bend up or down or they could do semitone up and down or send out MIDI triggers or change the pitch or change the timbre as you're performing. So these are the, these five buttons are performance mode button. These are patch selection buttons. So that's it for all the top buttons. On the bottom, we've got what looks like a lot, but really it's much more straightforward than you think. Let's see, starting top to bottom, there's a port mode select. Oh wait, it's not working. And what is that flashing LED doing? Oh, because the panel gets locked so that you don't, when you're holding it, accidentally switch something. That would be awkward. All right, so what you have to first do is press panel unlock button and this light will come on. If you turn it up right side and back over, it automatically relocks so you don't have to remember to unlock it. Once you've unlocked it, this Port mode changes what this five pin DIN connector does. It can either be control voltage output or MIDI output or foot pedal input. So you can use a foot pedal or some other external controller to change the sound. Then we've got the volume slider here. Notice that it's a relative slider, so it's only the motion. If you just click it somewhere, it doesn't do anything really. And you'll feel it vibrating with the haptic feedback and it'll give a longer click when you reach the top. Then we've got on the other side, we've got key up, key down, and key C and key F buttons. So you can pitch it to any key if you wanted to practice your G alto or you're um, playing with those 415 people, you just step it down a semitone. And then you can also select any octave. If you wanted it to be a higher pitch or lower pitch instrument, you just pitch the patch with this. Then we've got the tuning. In case you're at a 440 or 442 or 444, or it's a cold day or a hot day. And notice that this is the only button you can also do when you're holding it upright and playing, except that in order to prevent accidental actuation, you have to actually be playing for the pitch to change. So, you can't really hear it there, but if you're only when you're actually blowing, will it actually change the pitch? And then there's the next set of buttons. Let's unlock the panel again. There is temperament. So it can either be an equal or quarter comma mean tone or custom. Most patches are custom. And you just press this to cycle through those options. And then it has Three right now, we'll have more later. Fingering modes, basic, renaissance, and advanced. And so those, these buttons can be programmed to act differently in each of those modes. So in basic mode, all these extra or pads are turned off. That's why the lights go off. <clears throat> Oops, got to unlock it again. And then you can Renaissance, right now it doesn't actually do full Renaissance fingerings, it's just another mode. But so these now are configured to do semitones. So that's that mode. And then advanced mode, just a different set. And then these are all configurable in the editor. 
And then finally we have another slider here that can be also configured to adjust the parameters in different ways. And wait, you're wondering, what are these blue letterings for? So these are the alternate mode. If you look at this, you can barely read it, it says recal. So this button recalibrates, but also activates the secondary function of some of these buttons. So one thing it does is if you're having this light, remember from the last session, shows you a finger being activated, it will reset all the calibrators, calibration values and turn that off. It will also reset the breath. So if you ever notice the breath either always playing or not quite being responsive, which sometimes happens as it warms up, hold it level and press that button. But for also the other thing it does is on the bottom, it activates the alternate functionality, which only some of these have. So the ones that have it, if you press it, now this is indicating battery charge. And notice it's nearly full, but just going down. Then the pitch up and pitch down instead become breath response sensitivity up and down. So if it's not playing quite dynamically the way you want. And then the two other ones are, for temperament, you can also set two different MIDI modes, or actually three different MIDI modes. So that's just basically a set of settings for how it sends out MIDI data. And then the last one is the thumb sensitivity, which goes low, medium, and high. And that affects exactly when you pinch what threshold value is there. So depending on what your thumb technique, if you like to go like that, or you just like to go like that, you can do different sets, and then those can be fully customizable if these, the standard factory settings don't work. And then this isn't really a button, but this is the latch for taking off the battery. If you need to replace the battery, if you're using it heavily and the battery goes dead and then you're just about to go on stage and you thought in advance, you can have a second charged battery ready to pop in and go. And of course that's the USB connector, the headphone connector and the magnetic stand. And that's it. So you see, it looks complicated, but really simple. Thanks.